So mainly the effort of my lab is, has to do with understanding the t distant tissue response, the metastatic response to the cancer cell uh, when cancer cells want to grow in a distant tissue. So this, the tissue required to change in order for the cancer cell to adapt to that new environment, and this response is fundamental for, for the metastatic spread. So recently we have tried to understand what do they have, the cancer cells which are successful more than the other in triggering this crosstalk with the, with the distant tissue, and we identify a factor which only the more metastatic cells have, which is capable of triggering a faster uh, stromal response. So this changed tissue is called metastatic niche, so the cells are more capable then to um, trigger this metastatic niche. And importantly, this thrombospondin 2 also represents a, po a, a potential target for blocking this fundamental crosstalk. Another study which we have made, which is uh, very interesting, um, it has to do with the fact that a tumor growing in a primary tissue triggers a systemic response in the body. So neutrophil from the bone marrow are uh, increased, they are released in the blood, and then they spread into systemically into the tissue. And this tissue will have now an accumulation of neutrophil, which it happened only in presence of a primary tumor. So effectively, when a cancer cell infiltrates that tissue, will find an increased number of neutrophil compared to a, a, someone that doesn't have the disease. And we discovered that um, neutrophil then uh, engage in a paracrine crosstalk with a, the with a cancer cell, release a factor, which is called leukotriene, is an inflammatory factor, which boosts and selectively helps the more metastatic cancer cell to initially start proliferating into the new tissue. We try to use a, a, an anti-inflammatory, which is normally used in, in asthma, to block this um, inflammatory, the release and the production of this inflammatory uh, factor from the neutrophil, and this effectively uh, inhibit and reduce metastatic spread into the lung. This is in the model of breast cancer metastasis to the lung. Yeah, so this is a, is a, they're lipid, they're secreted by, by neutrophil, mainly leukocyte, um, and, uh, and they are, uh, they're called leukotriene, and they signal via um, receptor which are normally uh, present on immunocell, so there are the type 1 receptor which are spread on the, on the immunocell, but the cancer cell have a type 2 receptor which are still efficiently in triggering a response in proliferation. There are different types of response which would occur in cancer cell or inflammatory cell. And normally these signals are used to coordinate an inflammatory reaction, so they are normally essential for, for coordinating the reaction. But in the context of tumor, they can turn in favor of the tumor. Not really, because it only takes away one component. And, uh, and it doesn't really compromise an overall infection. It's, it's normally used for inflammatory disease to reduce um, acute response. Asthma. In asthma, for instance, yeah. in the context of the lung, that's the important and idea. Coming back to the first thing you mentioned, there was a factor that I would like to hear more about that as well. That one is more complicated because we don't really have a strategy to block it. Uh, we have characterized it as a new factor which uh, triggers a, a, a stroma response into the tissue. And of course, stroma in terms of fibroblasts and activated fibroblasts are also a, an important component within the metastatic niche. And they normally appear, in a, again, in, in event of wound dealing, so tissue injury responses, and again, they're providing a lot of good signaling for the cancer cell to grow. But we don't know yet how uh, thrombospondin 2 is effectively, I mean, we know that it's, it's mediating this activation by a, a binding beta, beta integrin, but we don't have a strategy to block that interaction at the moment. So to t turn it into a, a therapeutic assay, we, we don't really have the tool at the moment what we're looking for. So the idea is that 
this 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 per se would not block um, a cancer cell. So we'll reduce the efficiency of the metastasis, for example, and we'll make a cancer cell more um, vulnerable to uh, target therapy. So all the strategy to target the tumor microenvironment environment would be ideally used to weaken the cancer cell, to reduce relapses and to reduce resistance to the targeted therapy which effectively target the cancer cell. So with all these tests that we are doing in, in vivo using mice model, um, we, are, we are targeting only the microenvironment and we already see a reduction in metastasis. See, this all worked well for a use of this strategy in combination with certain therapy. The conclusion is exactly what I was pointing out at the end, is to make effort to target this incredibly important response of the tissue and the entire body to the cancer disease. Because the cancer or a cancer cell is not self-sufficient. And to succeed in growth within a tissue, within the body, it requires coordination of a lot of other signaling which come from the body. So blocking that will solve many problems in terms of relapses and uh, resistance to the target therapy which target directly the cancer.